told it was going to be a few days before you came in because of the injuries you sustained. So you made a house call? Unorthodox, I know, but I felt it was prudent to see you as quickly as possible before details fade. So, are you on any medication now that would alter or perhaps cause... It wasn't you to... a head injury. I'm fine. Everything you need to see is in the videos I sent. I would like you to help me build a clearer picture. I'd like to hear it from you, okay? Good. Let's begin. How long have you been with the Bureau? Eight years. But you already know that because you have my file. Now, I'd prefer if we cut the bullshit now. There's no need for the baseline questions. What do you mean? You were given the task to see if I lost my shit out in the field. And if so, how much responsibility does the FBI need to shoulder? I am not here to investigate your level of responsibility in the incident. I am a behavioral analyst. I am here to try to understand your account of it. To say it was bizarre would be an understatement. A profiler. They think I'm insane. Frankly, their opinion does not matter at this point. I would like you to tell me what happened. And you have my word for what it's worth that I will be fair. Well, as you know, I was in the Human Trafficking Division. Mainly in a stopgap capacity on the Border Patrol. After the New Mexico situation, I was put on leave for six months. I started to get anxious to get back in the field. I found this case in Northern California and begged my AD to let me do it. He agreed. What happened when you got there?
Agent Erickson? Deputy Ross, I assume. Please. Sorry we couldn't greet you when you arrived. Thought your flight came in tomorrow. Yeah, I was gonna stay in San Francisco for an extra night, but I decided to get a jump on things. Not a problem. How was the flight? Uh, bumpy. That coastal air can be a bit choppy. Chief Duffy wanted to come, but he's pretty tied up with another missing person case. There's another person missing? Why wasn't I informed? We only realized he was missing yesterday. That information should have come to me the minute it came to the station to be looked into. It's very scenic out there, but I'm not here for the view. I'm here to do a job. And to do said job, I need information in real time. Okay. Give me the case details. You were very abrupt with her. Did you take issue with how she conducted herself as an officer? Or? No. You had trouble in the past working with female colleagues? No, I was pissed. I don't have a problem with females. I have a problem with shoddy work. Let's go back. You said that when the deputy arrived, you were informed that another person was missing. Correct. I was told two men were out hunting the day before. Dave Aldrich, 40 years old, prominent member in the community, went out hunting with his friend Steve Haberman. Steve says that Dave was acting irregularly by the end. Could Mr. Aldrich just have left, taken a vacation? We thought of that, but his keys, phone, wallet... What about manic or suicidal tendencies? History of depression? No. You said he was acting irregular. Elaborate on that. Steve said that he was rambling on about hearing some music or whispering. And you said there was no history of mental illness? Nothing in his past, no. Man, let's... it's getting pretty late. We should look to head back. What? We still got a good two or three hours before the sun goes down. Can't call quits now. Look, man, I agreed to come out here and hunt with you. I don't fucking hunt. I hate this shit. You were having a rough week. Uh, I just figured uh, we could... All right, all right. Jesus. Sorry I took you away from your precious Sunday football, <laughs> or whatever you fucking do. Look, Dave, no, just head back to the truck. I'll be there in a second. When did you meet the sheriff? The 
He was in the field where the two men were hunting the day before. That's the first time that I met him. Here's our FBI agent. How is he? Got a little grouchy when I told him about Dave. Hmm. Ah, don't, don't pay him any mind, Abby. <laughs> this isn't my first time serving as a liaison to an FBI agent. These types all run the same. No personality, no respect. Don't worry, though. He'll poke around just long enough to say he did his job, and then he'll just leave. I don't know. He seems focused. Hmm. Chief Tucky. Thank you for meeting us out here. I also want to follow up with you later on at the station go over a couple case files. Well, uh, I don't mean to disappoint you, Agent, but we don't really have a station, per se. Uh, excuse me? There's about 600 people in this area. Mostly Native Americans that don't even want us around, let alone in a position of authority. What do you do with your prisoners? We ship them to county. As you know, we're all but cut off from civilization here. We're surrounded by miles of redwood forest in the Pacific Ocean. Our resources are limited. I understand. Well, I want to make sure that you do, Agent. Now, I speak for the deputy and myself when I say, we will extend to you every resource available to us. Now, I appreciate your help. But we want to work in consort with you. But we insist that you extend that same courtesy to us as well. <clears throat> of course. Uh, where was the missing person last seen hunting? What's this? Those scratches? Those are from deer. Deer? Yeah. Deer sometimes rub their antlers against tree bark certain times a year. I don't know. These just seem a little deep to be a deer antler. They're also concise, straight down to the side. All right, let's get out of here. I want to review the case file and any additional info that you do have. Miss Stuffy, that was delicious. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Now, just leave all the dishes. I'll get them in the morning. I know you guys have a lot of work to do, and I need to check in my kiln. Okay? Good night. Just make ceramics. Ah. Is this your first time in Humboldt? Yeah, uh, the drive over was beautiful. I've lived here all my life and this place still blows me away. I did have a little trouble getting to the island off the coast, however. When did you try and get out there? When I first arrived, I thought it'd be good to get an overview of the area. A lot of my research indicates that uh, the incidents happened around those spots. That's, uh, that's Indian Island. Uh, that territory is controlled by the local tribe. They really don't like outsiders poking around there too often. It'd be a process that you'd have to go through and have a special guide. It's something I can make arrangements for if you really want to go. I would. All right, then. But I should let you know something about these local folks before you do. They kind of have their own way of doing things around here. And if uh, somebody from the city or anywhere shows up, they know. And uh, more often than not, they will be weary of you being here. You've lived here all your life. Are you weary of me being here? No. No. Maybe 30 years ago. But I've come to understand it. Why the locals feel the way they do. And why is that? Well, I could tell you. Then I have to kill you. <laughs> what can you tell me about Dave? Dave. Dave's not the most interesting fellow around. 
Now it appears he's had a nervous breakdown and wandered off into the woods. You know, there's drop-offs that go all the way to the ocean down there. This really could be a run of unfortunate luck. Unfortunate luck. I don't think this is just bad luck. 2004, Jane Harper. 1993, Marissa Caputo, Jay Wynn, Darren Palmer, Roy Henry, all gone. Well, except for Roy, his remains were found, but it looked like he'd been mauled by an animal. This goes back for decades. Six in 1980, three in 1975. It all happens at once. Animal attacks and missing persons. It'll keep going for a short period and then nothing. I don't think this is a coincidence. How did you get this information? Initially, I didn't. The Bureau received several emails from Howard Kaufman, stating we needed to look into this. Howard sent you this information? Some of it, yeah. I put the others together when I realized there was a trend. Well, I guess I should let you know that Howard is not the most reliable of sources. Why is that? He had a nervous breakdown a long time ago, but it got pretty bad. He was violent for a few days. Well, regardless, I'm going to need to talk with him. He had enough sense to put this together, so I've got to know if he knows any more. All right, all right. Well, we can head over to the meeting whenever you're ready. I appreciate that. Hey. I asked nice yesterday, but today you're pissing me off. There's this whole area to play. Move on. This is the only level area. This is gravel. This isn't level. Why aren't you in school? Leave me alone, pervert. Don't you know it's creepy for grown-ups to talk to kids? <clears throat> Thanks, dick! I saw this Howard Kaufman name in the report. Tell me about him. I think most people would consider him insane. Mm -hmm. And you? If you would have asked me two weeks ago, I would have probably said yes. But now I'm not so sure. Maybe he is, but after the things that he's seen, I can understand why he would be. Howard, I'd like to thank you for uh, meeting us on such short notice. Who's this? Howard, that's Agent Valley Erickson. He's with the FBI. FBI? Don't much care for them. They never seem to care much for me. Sir, I just wanted so to... So you've been reading um, a lot of the correspondence I sent in. Finally. Yes, we did. And I'd actually like to know if you have any additional information uh, in regards to the case. Uh, if you know anything about the, you know, prior cases, who could be involved, if it might be part of a human trafficking ring. Trafficking? Do you really believe that all of these disappearances are part of any kind of fucking trafficking ring? I have several theories. That is one of them. Well, that is stupid. Did you read anything I sent you? Frankly, Howard, what you sent us is why I'm here. And so I'd like to see if you have any additional information so I can better prepare. You can't prepare for what this is. What he told us was absurd. There was nothing rational about it. But I could tell he believed every word he said. And what was that? He described a picnic that him and his wife, Cynthia, went on years before. And at some point, the dog ran for the tree line, and he went in after it, and he was overcome by this sound. 
he described it like a song. He lost his sense of awareness and ultimately he lost control over himself. It haunted him. It made him do things. What did? He believed it was a creature. And this creature made him do things. What things? He beat his wife. And you believe this song he hears from the creature made him do that? I lost everything because of this. I lost my wife. I lost my life. Don't you dare stand there and tell me that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <clears throat> Agent, something not someone is out there. I believe that this is its home. Lives in that wood area. And it hunts, feeds, and sleeps. It's a cycle. <clears throat> Mr. Kaufman, I understand that uh, you went through something traumatic, and we are all very appreciative of the information you've been able to give us so far, so we will definitely follow up with you if we have anything else. Agent, I know you think you've got this thing handled, but I assure you, you don't. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. I thought it was a fool. Where was the investigation heading from there? What the fuck is up with these sounds? I've been going back over these case files, and there are a lot of statements that indicate music or songs were heard or talked about. I mean, have you guys not looked into this? It was ruled as purely circumstantial. There was no connection to the other cases. I want to get out to the woods tomorrow. Chief already contacted someone from the tribe. Good. Having somebody who knows the area will be helpful. I wouldn't expect a warm welcome. Yeah, I'm well aware of that by now. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. I looked into your previous cases and you were involved in that New Mexico case a few months back. You know what? It's getting late. You should probably get home and get some sleep. We have a big day tomorrow. Duffy, Abigail. This is Agent Riley of the FBI. He's the one wanting to look around today. All right, any place in particular you wanted to start? Uh, any areas with caves or that an animal might make its den. If we've had one or more individuals doing this throughout the years, they would need a place to keep their victims. Okay. Well, we'll make our way over to the north. Good. What can you tell me about the attacks that occurred on this island? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry, you're not familiar? Let me make this very clear. I'm not here to regale you with tales and legends of my people. I work at the gas station. The sheriff offered me 200 bucks to show you around and I'll do that. But no bullshit stories, okay? Okay. I'll take you where you wanted to go, but I'm not responsible for anything that happens. And we leave when I say, no questions asked. I understand. All right. Let's make this quick. Keep your eyes open.
I want to check this out. We need to get out of here. It's going to be dark soon. It's not safe. God. Dave. Can you hear me, man? God, what happened to you? Is there anyone outside here with you? Don't wake me. Kill you, Dave! Oh. <laughs> Where's Oscar? to a hospital now! Sure. He is still out no. here. This could... Listen! If we don't get him to the hospital right now, he's gonna die! And it's on you! Oscar didn't make it. What the hell happened out there? That was our missing person. I put three shots in him before he went down. I've only ever seen that somebody high on PCP or meth. I mean, could he have been drugged? Did anybody see anything else? I don't know, he was beating the shit out of me. Uh, Oscar must have heard the fight, got scared and ran off. Oscar knew something bad was out there. That's why he was afraid. Howard was right. We weren't prepared for this. Oscar wouldn't talk about the attacks that happened on the island. What do you know? It's not something the locals like to talk about. In 1860, the tribe and the settlers were at odds. Some of the settlers' cattle got on tribal land and got slaughtered and Settlers organized a series of attacks that ultimately led to a massacre. Women and children. Jesus. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think we all need some sleep. And we can regroup in the morning. Why don't you guys just head home? The deputy said Oscar knew something was out there. What do you know? What are you getting at, Agent? Why do I feel you're not telling me everything? You know as much about this situation as I do right now. Bullshit. Enough. I just watched a guy get his throat ripped out. He was 6'1", 220 pounds, and he was terrified. Is that shit normal around here? Son. I'm tired. We need to regroup in the morning 
after we've both had some rest and you need to go home now. Mr. Woodenhorse is a member of the Hoopa tribe. We're actively trying to secure information about his death, but the tribe is declining an autopsy, citing religious views. But pictures taken at the scene are consistent with a large wolf or bear attack. Both animals are prevalent in the region. So. What about the den? Like we found toys and clothing from 50 years ago. I'm not a zoologist, agent. I don't know what it was. Let's come back to that shortly. Uh, the hunter that went missing, he was found, but dead. You claim you shot him. Self-defense. Yeah, I had no choice. Was it done out of fear or necessity? There were witnesses. Neither of whom can testify on your behalf. I saw the sheriff being attacked, and then the suspect came from me. I did not want to kill him. It took four shots to make him stop. And you feel that that was not excessive force? Under those circumstances, I am confident I made the right decision. And after what I'd seen, I decided to go back and speak with Howard. I know he didn't make a lot of sense, but I thought if I could see between the lines, something would flush out. Tell me everything you know. I didn't see it, but I saw where he, it, lives. There were bones everywhere. I'm guessing you surprised him. What do you mean? Well, it's... Bane has survived for decades, centuries. It knows how to cover its tracks. It knows no one's going to go up there. It's smart. What is it? Ever hear of a Wendigo? No. It's an old Native American creature. Stories vary, but they all end the same way. They say that when you eat something, you absorb its essence. Well, the same holds true for humans. According to legend, when you eat a human, you absorb its strength, stamina. You become something more. Eventually, they become something different altogether. And you think this is what's taking people? Yes. Or something very much like it. I know, it's crazy, but think about it. It's got strength, speed. It only has to hunt every 10 years or so. Everything I've read, it all says the same thing. What about the song? You said you heard, you hear a song. Yeah. There's little about that. My theory is that this creature only hunts when it has to. It prefers to lure its prey in. We have all kinds of animals that lure their prey in. The anglerfish, the margay, assassin bug. Is it so far-fetched to think that this thing could do something more? No, this is insane. Agent, this is real. We have to hunt it and we have to kill it. I can't believe I let myself believe this. We have to stop it. If we... When this thing has done eating, all that it needs to, it's going to go back into hibernation. Then in 10 years, it starts again, and I don't know if I've got another 10 years. Hey, it's getting late. Aren't you going to go to sleep? Just taking the edge off. Hmm. So sorry about Oscar. No, in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. He could be grumpy, but he was a good man. Yeah. It was my fault. Hey, you had no idea something was going to happen. You're a good sister. I got to poop.
Marvin. What? Hey, turn the lights off before you go to bed. Yeah, okay. Okay? Okay, okay. Night. Good night. According to your report, after you'd seen Howard, you went back to your cabin to sleep. That is correct. What happened? I hadn't slept well the third day in a row and had a lot on my mind. You mentioned a boy. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it in your initial report. I was in shock. I understand. Sometimes even the most asinine or minute detail can shed more light than we would have imagined. Please, tell me anyway. It was the third morning in a row, and this kid, maybe 10, he would stand outside my cabin and bounce this basketball. It woke me up, so I opened the door to yell at him, and he wasn't there. His bike tire was spinning like he had just been there, but I looked around and there wasn't a soul in sight. You know those moments when, like, everything is that quiet that makes more noise than any sound you could ever imagine? That's how it was. I wandered around for a bit, and I found his jacket. And I found him about 30 yards away. There wasn't much left. I just sat there. Agent. Agent. Sorry. There's nothing mentioned in the report of a little boy's death. That's because it didn't happen. It was just a dream. I never saw the kid again. I woke up to my cell ringing. The deputy was hysterical. What happened? We don't know much. The meter man saw her through the sliding glass door. She was strangled. He called her in, but Norman was nowhere to be found. Jesus. Agent, I know you didn't know Norman that well, but he loved his sister. He would have never done anything to hurt her. Whatever's happening has made its way here. I believe you. If we're going to do anything for Norman, we need to go right now. What do you mean? Just come with me to the car. We'll talk on the way. Okay, what do we need to do? We have to do this my way. You listen to everything I say, do exactly as I tell you. Okay. What is this? What? Okay, this thing is coming out tonight, so we have to be ready. Are you sure we shouldn't try and lure it to us? That won't work, stupid. Look. If you see the sheriff, you can't hesitate. He won't be himself. He's going to be under this thing's control. You know, he's going to try to hurt you. Okay. Okay, so we need something special to kill this, like a knife or silver bullets. Are you some kind of asshole? I told you, this thing was once a man, which is why I have a shotgun. If that doesn't work, then I have a handgun. You get a chance. Don't fucking miss. I won't. 
Oh, wait. This is the best I could come up with. Put these in. These are noise canceling. I can't take a chance of you all getting under this thing's control. Yeah, and that leaves us unable to hear. So use your eyes. Please, let me stop you there a second. What were you planning to do? At this point, I was convinced that there was something supernatural out there. Supernatural? Yes. And I know it sounds crazy sitting here in this safe place miles away, but after the things that I had seen and heard, I was positive there was something out there. I was going to hunt it down. Agent. Let's talk about New Mexico for a moment. What does that have to do with anything? Maybe nothing. Maybe everything. I'm here to try to understand why things transpired as they have. And I feel that the fact that you had recently returned from a major incident and a disciplinary leave of absence might explain some of this. In what possible way? Perhaps post-traumatic stress. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. Could be. It's just a theory. I don't know. Right now. <laughs> but we gotta find out. I bet you never saw yourself hiding in the forest. Waiting for this thing whenever you first took this case, huh, Agent? That case you asked me about? New Mexico? That was the last case I worked on. We were investigating a big drug trafficking ring. They were operating all throughout the United States. And they were selling heroin, meth, you name it. It was all low quality shit. So they were leaving overdose after overdose everywhere they went. We were finally able to pin one of them down get him to tell us where the um, main hub of operations was at. New Mexico. We raided that place and we found everything. Drugs, money, guns. It was a career making case. We also found a hatch that led to a sub-basement. And when we went down there, we found ten kids chained to the wall. They were being used for sex slavery. Some of them were young enough that they wouldn't have even known anything outside of that life. I lost it. I went up and I grabbed one of those guys we busted, and I started to beat him with the butt of my gun. I hit him over and over again. I almost killed him. Creatures come in all forms. Very little surprises me anymore. Would you consider that excessive force? Yes. Did you lose control? On that day, in that situation, I failed to use a sufficient amount oh, of discretion. Please don't talk to me like you're in front of the panel. Not now. Did you lose control? You have no idea what I saw there. Yes or no? Simple well, question. That's I all I'm asking. I sat here all day and asked you your in questions. All right, don't talk to me like that. You know what? I'm trying to help you. How? I, How are you helping me by probing? By me helping you not sound like you're okay. Yes. Crazy. Yes. I saw those kids. And I saw the man with their key around his neck, and I lost control. Are you happy now? I'm happier. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, tell me what happened when, uh, when they were 
before they found you in the woods. So the common theme with this thing was the noises it made. It lured you in with this song. It like hypnotized you somehow. Howard's answer to that was wearing noise canceling earbuds. <laughs> My concern was we wouldn't be able to hear each other. And I was right. Anybody see anything leave through there? No, nothing. Put in your plug in over here. see it coming. When I woke up, I checked on Howard and half of his head was missing. I found the deputy and her neck had been fractured. And she looked like she'd been dragged around by teeth. But you made it out. Look, I barely remember walking out of that forest, let alone calling it in. Whatever that thing was, it killed everyone out there. I don't know why it left me. Okay, I'm sorry. Calm down. Move on. So after that, you flew home after spending the night at the local hospital. And some uh, scratches and bruises, cracked a few ribs, a few loose teeth. You make it home, and what happens? Sitting here, just like I am talking to you, and she knocks on the door. Mm -hmm. Agent, you and I both know it wasn't animals. What happened there was done by something. And I don't believe it was an isolated occurrence. There have been several hot spots in the last 30 years where unsolved missing person cases have occurred. Hot spots? It's, well, for lack of a better term, yes. It's, would hunting grounds be more appropriate? The Everglades, you've got the Pine Barrens, parts of the Appalachian Mountains. You, you've got Mojave Desert and the island you just left. It's a migration, it's a hunting pattern, and it's gone on for decades. And I know where it's going next. Where? If the pattern stays true, 
the Pine Lake, Wisconsin area is where you'll find it. Why are you so interested in this? I'm Ray. I'm a doctor. If it's all right, I have a few questions for you. Do you remember going to the house today? Yes. Do you remember what happened? Yes. Do you know whose house it was? Somebody that Ted knows. Uh, who is, who is Ted? <sighs> He's someone to fear. Is that why you listen to him? Because you're afraid? What about your family? When was the last time you saw them? I haven't spoken to them for years. How many years? I don't know. A few. Why? Ted wouldn't let me talk to them. Are they here now? Can I see them? Lindy. When your parents sent you away for a while, were you, were you angry at them? When I was in the hospital? No, they told me I was sick and that I needed to feel better. Do you know that the house that you were in was your parents' house? That's not true. I'm afraid it is true. No. No, I would have known it and, and Ted wouldn't... Maybe. I don't think Ted exists. Yes, he does. He took care of me in the hospital. There was no record of any patient, employee, or visitor with that name at the facility at the time that you were there. I didn't make him up. I think maybe, maybe you did. Ted is a fictitious entity that you've created. He, he isn't real. You know what I see! You don't know what I see! You! <clears throat> Lindy, members of your family were murdered today. Your little brother hid but he saw everything. He's in a room down the hall. I just spoke to him. And he told me that the person that killed his family was his big sister, Lindy. Yeah. also said you were alone. You've done something horrible today. No. Okay, even if you are right, I mean, how do we kill it? If this thing is something else, I mean, would bullets even work? Well, I, I started looking at these bodies, the ones that were found, and I was looking to see if they had anything in common. And they do. They do. The, have you heard of hemochromatosis? I haven't. Well, it's more commonly called the iron overload disease. It's where your, your body, it produces a, a, an unhealthy amount of iron in your blood. Okay. So, so it doesn't like iron. So when it tastes it in the blood, it retreats. Iron has to be what can kill it. So what, I'm gonna find this thing and give it a blood disease? What are you, a fucking idiot? Iron slugs, even if iron isn't a weakness, these things will tear.
tear it apart. Okay, what do I need to do? I follow the pattern of the creature. When he's not here, I've looked for him in his den in the daytime. This is a map. You have to go at night when he is most vulnerable. Follow the map and finish it.
Sure, that's a story you want to stick with. It's the only one I got. Thank you for seeing me today. I'm sure, you'll get some follow-up calls soon. So, what happens now? What was your major in college? Criminology. Might want to brush up on your minor. 